Big up to Pet Talk Boxing UK. Boom. Nice one, D. Nice one. Thank you, Dillian White. Pet Talk UK. Ladies and gents. For, for the, the fight, fight fans locked in. For, for the, the football, football fans locked in. Now it's time, time for some real talk, talk on Pet talk. talk. Let's go! Everyone too good game, but it don't really face me. Uh. The man that ain't mad like Max, the boy that murky like HP. Yeah. And them guy walk the slide on the back, ball in like a baby. Oi, oi. Welcome to the Pep Talk UK Sports Podcast, the podcast that talks the major boxing and football news from around the globe, real points of view from a real panel, hashtag real talk on Pep Talk. Please subscribe to Pep Talk UK on iTunes and YouTube. Don't forget to like, share and comment. Now, I'm your host, Frankie B. Um, no Pascal today, no MJ, but I'm joined by a man that will fight on a Dillian White versus Lucas Brown undercard at London's O2 this weekend. It's the man from South London himself. He's in a building. Chris Two Slick Conga. How you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good, brother. How are you? Bro, I'm, I'm doing well, mate. I'm not, I'm not too slick yet. But you know, I'm getting there, mate. You know, you're getting there, getting I'm there, to up getting the swag. there. I'm trying to up the swag to be too sick. <laughs> <laughs> man, it'll, it'll come, it'll come, bro. <laughs> bro. No doubt. All good, bro. Bro, so it's fight week. How you feeling, bro? Um, I'm feeling great, feeling ready to do the business. And now it's just about getting in there and just doing what I have to do, you know. And how long's the camp been? Has it been a long, drawn out camp? A lot of preparation. Yeah, it's it's been a long drawn out camp due to me being with Isaac, helping him push him for his fight, and then coming back, obviously helping a mate as well, Eric. Yeah, Eric that's Maconzo, it. Maconzo, Pesto Four as for well. Pushing for his fight, Pesto yeah. Four as well. So I've just been working as well myself, but also helping the guys in the camp, which is good, you know. Yeah, because also. At the O2 as well as another stable mate of yours, uh, Richard Reactpo. Yeah, as well. Richard Reactpo. So the Working Miguel's boys have been busy. We're, we're, we're busy, man. We're busy 100%. So this year is a big year for us and we want to get on the big stage and stay there and work from there. So, yeah, man. And this is this is the start of something good, you know. That's it, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, when I saw you come out of Isaac last time, man, I was... I kind of nodded my head hard to the sea biz, you know. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's Miguel's. Miguel's yeah. was it in the building. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> so, sparring, part of your preparation. Um, mm-hmm. You've been sparring quite a few. So, at first, we were, when we was in, we was in uh, Ukraine, there was a few, there was no one my way. It's a shame because we go wow. to all these countries and, there's no one that's my way, so I have the to man, just man, there are two hench out there, yeah? Two hench out there. <laughs> they were just a different weight, so there was yeah. super middleweights, and oh, there was wow. one middleweight there. So I just had to get the work with them, and obviously that can help me in, in a sense where it helped my boxing ability, where I have to just keep boxing and stay away from these guys because they're much heavier than me. Mm. Any bit of weight they put on me, it will affect me in the long run. But... We worked with them. We got a good working, which is great. And uh, like I said, it's all an experience, isn't it? The Ukrainians, they train very hard. And just remember that their gym was very hot, so the pressure oh, wow. was crazy. So by the second round, second, third round, I was getting tired because I wasn't used to it. I wasn't used to, when you go with my girls, mm-hmm. or only, the only time it's hot in my girls is in the summer. Really and truly, it's not, it's not, it ain't got that heat that you need to push. And that's with a lot of UK gyms, okay. you know. So over there, it was like we was training in a sauna. I believe that place was a sauna. Wow. It was hot. You could just be sitting there and you'll be sweating. 
Wow, but that, that must be good for like cutting down on weight, though. Hundred percent, hundred percent is good for cutting down weight. Like I said, Isaac made weight when we was out there. So when he come here, wow. I was forcing him. I was making. I say, yo, let's go get some extra food to eat because you need to eat. You need to feel strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we was at Ted Ted Bammy's house. We were staying there. We wake us up in the morning, go run and whatnot. In terms of food, there's times where I have to say, yo, Isaac, we need to go breakfast in the morning you need to eat this because you're you're underweight now now you're underweight so now you need to put on the weight <laughs> you know what i mean and isaac is not a big cruiserweight mm. but he's he's too small he's he's too big for light heavy yeah yeah he's so stuck he has a bit to in do the cruiser so he's yeah. stuck a bit in the middle so to make the weight for him is not is not an issue so that's why I had to help him out in that sort of sense and obviously just motivate him for the fight and be there for us because we all know boxing is a lonely sport it is it is definitely you know? a lot of people got a lot of opinions but when you step in the ring you know it's just it's just it's you a different thing and it's, it's not easy you. man it's You're not easy yeah because someone there is trying to get a win you know that's someone it. there is coming to try and take your head off too so, so when you were out in Ukraine, um, did you bump into Usyk and um, Lomachenko, yeah, yeah. them boys? I bumped into Usyk, bumped into Lomachenko. Lomachenko, it was a good experience seeing him and just getting little tips of him, even though he can't speak English that much. Okay. But he tried. I think Usyk can speak better English than him. So with Usyk, he was actually talking and... He was showing us a bit more in the bags and, and stuff, you know. His coach is very good as well. He was a previous fighter himself. So yeah, um we was more we was more tuned in with Usyk and he was basically helping both of us out. Mainly Isaac as well. He's getting in work mm-hmm. with Isaac, but Isaac he also bear in mind that Isaac also has a fight. So he gave him some good advice. On how to work and how to beat a tall guy that throws long punches. Back to you, back to you, mm-hmm. uh, Chris. Now you're fighting a, a very tough Cameroonian mm-hmm. fighter, mate. Um, a guy with a more than ninety percent loss ratio, but it doesn't it doesn't really get stopped. You know, he it he usually yeah. goes the distance. So it's going to be yeah. um yeah. Yeah. it's going to be hard work out there. You know, even mm-hmm. though it should be you know straightforward. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, for me, this is the kind of opponent that I need to face. These are the type of guys that's going to help me to progress to the next level. And if I want to, you know, progress to it, to another level, I need to face these guys. One, two, he's also coming to win. He's tough. No one has stopped him. And uh, even Matchroom themselves told me if I was to stop him, it would be a big statement. But that's not my aim. Yeah. Every time I step in the ring, I say to myself, go there, win round by round. I win the first round, win the second round, win the first round. I'm not here to give no rounds away. So if I get the stoppage and it happens, I get it. If I don't, I win round by round and go through my pace and we go through the tactics that we've been practicing for for this kind of man. And it's, it's pretty simple. He's short. And he likes to throw big wild hooks. Yeah, yeah. Five foot three. Five foot three. He's a short man, <laughs> but he looks big, and he's he's coming and he's looking very durable and tough. And, so, and to be fair, most African fighters are about that life. You know, mm-hmm. from Cameroon. Yeah, about it. You know, he's a man who yeah, uses ban- banku and jollof rice and all those hard foods, man. You know, he's gonna have a, yeah. he's gonna have a strong chin. Yeah, he will. He will. And I'm, I'm expecting that. So, yeah, I'm expecting to go there it went round by round. But I see the flaws. I see his defense ain't the his defense ain't the greatest. But I see he's got his strong. He ain't had that many knockouts. He's only knocked out. He's had two knockouts, but it's been with the same person anyway that he's fought. So he is strong, but. He's a live like opponent, I said, kind of a he's live a live, opponent. He's a live opponent, but like I said, for me, the amateur experience, I face all the 
all the all the top guys. I faced the strong guys, come back to beat them. You know, I faced every single opponent that that could be out there. So I'm ready to step up to the challenge for this guy, and I'm hundred percent coming in to win. And if I get if I get the stoppage man down, let it be, let it come. <laughs> But it will come. <laughs> it will come. It will be smart. You'll see a much smarter Chris this fight. You'll see a lot of inside work this fight because I believe he's open to counters. So we'll see. I'm seeing the flaws in him, and we'll we'll put it to good use, hundred percent. See, I, I like it when the man done his homework. You know, he knows all about mm -hmm. his opponent. You know, hundred percent. And the main thing is, I only watched his fight once or twice. My coach said, "Oh, when we get home today, we're gonna watch it again." But I believe that once I watch it once or twice, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going back to work on what I I need to work on, not to work on his his positives. I'm working on my positives, and I'm working mainly on my negatives to make them a positive. You know, to make it work for me when I'm in the ring. It's on a it's on a big night of boxing, mate. You know, at, the, at London's O2, just like mm -hmm. your uh, stable mate Isaac Chamberlain. Now it's your opportunity. That's my my you know, time, man. On it's a big my show, time. on a matchroom yeah. show as well. Definitely, definitely, it's my time to prove that I belong on this type of stage here. Um, and I, ju I just gotta go in there and, and do it, man. I, I've done I've done the tickets. I've done a few tickets and. Uh, It's time to put on the show. Yeah, and and what about actually matching itself? Could there be a possibility in the future? Hey, hopefully, man. Hopefully, we can get something going on. We all know right now, the place to be is matching. If it ain't matching, it's from Corn. So I'm definitely looking at one or the two. I want I want to be involved with someone that's big, so they can push me and help my mm -hmm. career. And like I said, I'm hungry. I box in the small stages for for a year and a half now. It's going to be touching two years, and um, yeah, I'm ready. I've I've only been a year and a half in the game, and I'm ready to 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 make make the step up and fight on these big stages. I've already done it twice on the Eubank undercards. That's right. And yeah, now I want to do it. I want to do it now on the matchroom stages, man. You totally sold out of tickets. I mean, is there any way that people that want to pick up some last-minute tickets can get at Combo yourself? Yeah, yeah, you can get at uh, Combo Nation Pro, and that's on Instagram and Twitter. Or you can get at Whole Nine Management, but it's spelled Whole Nine M G M T for tickets, and any of them will, will, will be able to source it out to you guys. My chi. So we're just gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna also touch on uh, on the main event itself. Yeah, Dillian White, another Miguel's boy, versus yeah. Lucas Big Daddy Brown. Now yeah, these two, yeah, yeah. they don't really like each other, so um, could be quite intense in the ring, mate. Um, how how mm -hmm. do you see this one? Obviously, Lucas Brown, you know, he's been a former world champion, but. Mm -hmm. And Dillian White himself has worked so hard to build himself up to this stage where he's yep. ranked so highly with the WBC. So mm -hmm. you've got a guy that can bang um, mm. in, in Lucas Brown, but then you've also got you know a guy that's now being really technically cultured and educated under Mark's tips mm -hmm. in, in Dillian White. It, sh it should be a corker. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I believe, well, first of all, I want to thank Dylan White for getting me on this show because he's the one that put my name out there yeah, and the said, card. yeah, he picks the undercard and he was the one that got me on there. So I want to give a big, a big thank you to him for letting him. Obviously, he knows that I'm, I've come from the underground yeah, yeah. scene in the small stages, and he wants that. to put me on. Yeah, yeah. So give a big shout out to him first. Uh, secondly, I want to say that we all know Dylan is the smarter fighter. Dylan can box and he can fight inside. You can see, you've seen him box people like um, Ian Lewison. You've seen him box Dave Allen, but you've also seen him in a war zone with Joshua and you've seen him in a war zone with Derek Chisora. So he can do both, which is a great look. 
that's right. I believe yeah. Lucas Brown is a warmonger, so that means he's coming to fight. He comes to fight. I don't think in terms of boxing skills that he's on the level Dylan White is on. And I believe Dylan White can box him and then in the late rounds go for the war and try to take him out. And I believe he can do that. He will, for me, I'm predicting Dylan White to go. I'm going for a late stoppage. I believe Dylan White probably box smart for the first half of the fight. Probably try and wear Lucas Brown down, you know, and then go for the finish. Mm-hmm. But 100%. Again, in heavyweight boxing, uh, I just saw a clip today of Hassan Rackman when he put down Lennox Lewis. Yeah. And that Any, reminded anything me. Anything can happen. Anything huh? can happen. Definitely. definitely. Buster, Buster Douglas put down Tyson. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, if you just drop your hands for one minute. So, you, do you want to also as well shout out your, your boy, React Paul? Which React yeah, Paul yeah. is also on the bill as well. 100% man I want to say listen Richard Riappor is the next cruiserweight coming up you see him with Isaac Lawrence O'Coley the Craig Kennedys and listen Richard Riappor is up there people listen do you see this guy you can punch and there's a, there's been days there's been months in the gym where I've just seen Richard just dropping sparring partner after sparring partner wow and that's real and that's real. And there's times where, when he was about to box Lawrence, because he did get offered the fight. Yes, we heard about, all about he, that. He, he got offered the fight. He did get offered the fight. We don't know who made the call, but they made the call. But when they found out it was Richard, I think that's when they said, maybe it's too early for this one. So they pulled him out. And trust me, Richard could hit. I've heard two. I've heard a f- few people that sparred both, and they said, "Nah, Richard's power is much different to Lawrence's power. Lawrence has power, but Richard is on another level." And I believe that because I've sparred it myself, and I know what it's like. Wow, you know. Reaction. So, yeah, there's sometimes wow, I, f- I just have to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know wow. what I mean? I have to get in there. I, I spar anyway. I don't mind. Wow. That's how I am. You know, regardless if they're stronger than me or not, but there might be that someone I might fight. He might have that power. <clears throat> okay, cracking stuff. Well, Chris, thanks for joining us, mate, and um, wish no you problem. all the best at London's O2, yeah. my brother. Yeah, thank you very much. Big up Pep Talk UK once again, man. Love always. Now it's interview time, and it's fight week, baby. Ahead of the mass bill at the O2 this weekend, we caught up with the two fighters headlining the bill. Let's hear from the WBC silver heavyweight champion, that guy from Brixton, the body snatcher himself. It's Dillian White. Pip Talk UK are joined by the body snatcher, Mr. Dillian White. How you doing, dude? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Just here at the presser. Just ready to go up to them do Rick. Lucas Brown. Lots of chat on social media. Listen, Lucas Brown is Lucas Brown, and it? he's saying he's going to punch me in the face. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. But I just say to Lucas Brown, mate, you think you can come to my city and punch me in the face and get on your plane and go home safe? Unharmed. He's going to get the chance. He can try and punch you at the O2. Yeah, that's fine. That's different. But you know, he's saying if you know at the presser, you may have to punch me in the face this and the other. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, it's good. He's got a lot of fight in his belly. He comes here to fight, and that's what I want. So that, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know. He's a big lad. He's undefeated. Mm. What's going to happen to his own? I fight many big lads before. You know, just it just it's nothing I never ain't seen before. I fought better guys than him, better boxers, stronger guys than him. So. You know, it's nothing yet seen before. You know, Ali's just a big, strong guy. That's Ali's. He's a big bully, just big, strong bully. That's Ali's. How's training been? I see you on the rowing machine. Training's good. The rowing machine is hell, but <laughs> you know, I gotta just keep milking it, man. I'm surprised but you ain't still last night smashing that rowing machine up. I just, there's a few times I got off it and felt like it's lifting up and throwing it over, <laughs> o- over the balcony. Just, just see that it's getting ah, and throwing it over the balcony. But you know, it's 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 a piece of kit that I hate, but it helps me a lot. So I just keep 
grafting, man, and keep grinding. Anything that's hard for me in the gym, I just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it till I master it and I get better at it. On a personal note, I had a question I've been wanting to ask you. Do you know all them neck exercises you do? You're mm -hmm. gonna go out of every shirt physically possible. Look at that size of that neck, man. I'm trying to get the Andy neck. You're trying to get the Andy neck? Yeah. <laughs> man, like Andy's, man, like Andy's security, his neck is. You see, it's just neck and shoulders, there's no head. Man it's, like it just, it's just neck, his neck go all the way up. <laughs> man like Shaz is not making jokes about man like Andy, because man like Shaz meets Andy every week, and man like Shaz is gonna get beaten up by him. <laughs> That's very smart. <laughs> Dylan, That's very smart. You're a heavyweight, I'm nowhere near that. A man like Andy gonna remember this and gonna beat me for this. No. Nah. No, nah, no, nah, that's it. There you go. He's just head, there's just no neck. It's just he's just shoulders and head. That's it. That's a good sign though, having a wide neck, and you know? it's a good sign. It's good. It's good he's got a nice wide neck in him, you know. So no, a strong neck is essential in any any sport, any contact sport or any high impact sport, a strong neck's important, man. You know. So I try and make mine as strong as I can, that's all. Well, come fight night, Pep Talk boys are gonna be there. Go mm -hmm. get that windy. Yeah, of course. It's time for the tattoo penis to get massaged. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, not me. Nice one, D. Uh, cheers. 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 Thank you, Dillian White. Right, let's hear from a man that will be in the opposite corner on Fight Night itself. It's the man they call Big Daddy, Lucas Brown. Well, you are, it's Frankie B, and I'm joined by the Big Daddy himself, Lucas Brown. How you doing, Geese? Very good, my friend. How are you? I'm doing well. I'd like to say uh, welcome to the UK. I could say good day, mate. <laughs> to be honest, not, not many people in Australia say good day, mate, unless you're from sort of out the country sort of thing. But um, yeah, thank you very much for welcoming me here. Yeah. You used to be a big fan of neighbours and Ramsey yeah, Street yeah, and all that, you know. Yeah. But, and there's some some old issues to settle. There's been a lot of to and fro social media. Is this personal? Was it was it business as well? D to be honest, I don't like him, and I, I'm assuming he doesn't like me. So it, it is like legit. It's not just something that's made up. Cracker stuff. And your prediction? Knockout for me, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like judges decisions i don't like having my um my career in someone else's hands so i definitely want to knock him out cracking stuff lucas all the best in pep talk thank you thank you very much thank you, mate. Thank you lucas cracking stuff right now finally featuring on the undercard is a man that is 4-0 making a lot of waves out there it's the former olympian anthony the machine fowler Oi, oi, it's Frankie B reporting for Pep Talk UK. I'm joined by the man himself, the machine. Anthony Fowler, how you doing, Geese? All good, mate. All good, thank you. Right, so let's get to business. Dillian White versus Lucas Brown undercard. You're going to feature in there. How's preparations been so far? Yeah, I had a, a bad start of the year. I've had a few injuries, a few niggles. Sparred top boys, Josh Boati, a few GB lads. So I'm sparring a high standard. I'm doing well and um, I'm starting to feel good now I want to be flying come fight night whoever it is mate they're in for a hard night I know, th I know that for a fact <laughs> R rumour has it you know you're called a machine because you're half man half cyborg is that true? yeah I've got um, metal <laughs> metal under my skin nah to be honest I got called a machine just because of my worth ethic yeah, I train yeah. very very hard like this morning I'm late for this interview now because I've done three and a half hours in the gym yeah, and people, wow. people, people don't do three and a half got there at nine o'clock left at half twelve and um, to me I don't mess around mate and that's without a pre-workout? I, um, I, I had a caffeine gel, I can't lie. <laughs> wow, so um, obviously last time out, um, you've got some good rounds under your belt. Do you think that's going to put you in good stead as you progress in your career, getting more and more rounds? Yeah, obviously it was good, but I have boxed at WSB which, with the GB squad, which was at a higher level. And they were five-round fights, so that's all hold me in good stead. Obviously six rounds last fight, every round was comfortable. I was dictating the pace, I was leading off, I was pressurising, so I had it on my own way. Whereas when we go through the levels, people are going to try and push me and make me wait for the round, so then we'll see what I'm made of. How, how is it for a boxer under the big bright lights in London? Yeah, I mean, not, not a phase me, mate. You'll see me in the night, I'll stand there with a smile on my face. Doesn't matter who I'm fighting, I enjoy the whole experience and not a phase me, mate. I, I prepare correctly and I perform from the night, I always deliver. Cracking stuff. Well, Anthony, we'll be backing you come fight night. Uh, it's all about the machine, my brother, Anthony Fowler. Yeah! Thanks, my brother. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. All the best at the O2 on fight night. Right now, there's no Premier League games for us to digest this weekend as it's international break. But I'd like to thank Chris Congo for joining me. I'd like to thank the listeners for locking in. 
Make sure you listen to us again next week and join us for another Pep Talk UK podcast. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave your comments in the box below. Thank you. Pep Talk.